Hey everyone, today we are working with an alternative process called chemigrams. And chemigrams are one of my favorite kinds of things you can do in photo because, like I said, it's alternative. It's um, not something you can totally control like you can when you're working with a camera or even in the dark room with an enlarger. Um, it, it, is different and you just don't always know what you're gonna get so it's important to go into it with an open mind um, willing to try different kinds of marks and different things that you can do with your chemicals um, the way it works is you get a piece of photo paper we call it photo paper it is photosensitive paper so typically in the dark room if you turn on the lights or have the lights on at all um, it completely ruins the paper immediately and what happens is the paper starts to get exposed to light Again, almost immediately. So this paper has been out for about five minutes and already this is what it looks like, which is crazy. However, with chemigrams, it, you don't have to have a dark room. You need the chemicals that you use in the dark room, but you could totally do this in any other space um, as long as you have photo paper, developer, and fixer. That's all you need, okay? So we're gonna use those chemicals. It will help you understand how those chemicals work in the dark room um, and then how you can make a positive image and a negative image. Let's first test out whether or not you can tell the difference. So, is this image right here a positive or a negative? This is a negative. Here is a positive. The subject matter that takes up most of the image, which are mostly these marks, is in white, while the background is black. Whereas with a negative, or excuse me, a positive, it's the opposite, where the subject is mostly in black and the background is white. So here we have a positive, here we have a negative. So we're going to be using both today. It's a very simple, easy process. All you need, again, is these chemicals, some materials to make your marks, such as sticks or Q-tips, or you could use your hand if you're wearing a glove. Um, you could use leaves, pieces of grass, yarn, anything really that has like a little texture to it that you can dip in the chemicals. So the first thing we're going to do is make a positive image. Get your piece of photo paper and again this works great with like paper that's been ruined. We don't need to throw it in the trash. We can save it and play around with it later to make a chemigram. So first what I'm going to do is definitely write my name on my paper. Um, because if we're all doing these, they can get lost easily and it can be hard to recognize some of them. So definitely make sure you do that uh, beforehand on the back of it very carefully. Otherwise, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by grabbing some of my materials here that I'm going to make some marks with, right? I have a little piece of straw that I got outside. I have a leaf and I have like a really nasty looking bottle cap. So let's see what happens. Um, I'm just going to take this and the first um, tray in the dark room that's like the closest to the end is always the developer. When you're working with your making prints at the larger station, when you're done, you always bring it first to the developer tray. So you always want to, you dip it and then you kind of give it a little shake over top so that it doesn't drip all over the place um, and you're not like putting a huge amount on your print. Okay, it looks like you will be able to see this. So I'm going to carefully guide it with my hand. And you can see already where it's starting to uh, work. It's getting darker. It doesn't take long. Our developer is very strong, so I just hold it down. And I'm going to hold it down, I'm just kind of keeping it in place to get that imprint for about 10 seconds, if I had to guess, to get a nice rich black. Um, if I want to actually put some drips on purpose, I could put some drips on purpose and then carefully take my paper and hold it up and then tilt it. And you'll see right here, there's a drip happening. Watch what happens to that drip. It's starting to get darker and darker. And then maybe I turn it this way. So that can be really fun if you enjoy playing with drips and like making different curves and lines through that. I can also, again, take my hand and carefully just dip a little bit. You don't need a lot. And sort of, I'm just <laughs> moving it into a circular motion to kind of, I didn't want it to be black. I'm hoping it's not gonna turn black. I wanted a darker tone of gray. And you can see what that looks like down in here. Um, maybe one t more test I will do is taking my bottle cap, putting that in, lifting up so it's not drop dripping wet. And then I'm gonna put that in the upper corner, press down, lift up. I don't want that one to be extremely dark. I like having a variety of different tones so that not everything in my print is going to be jet black, but there is a nice contrast happening. 
And then lastly, of course, looking at your print, making sure the composition looks like something interesting to look at. You know, visually to me, this is going to be interesting. Like there's a lot of movement happening with my marks, but there's definitely a focal point area down here with all of this, whatever that is, right? All right, next step. You're gonna take your print and put it carefully in the uh, stop bath. Now the stop bath typically is actually a really stinky solution that stops the developer from processing any further. Today, it's just water and all you do is you do what we call agitating the print. When you agitate the print, you're taking the tray and you're kind of just picking it up really ever so slightly so that it's not like splashing anywhere, but it's moving your print around. Um, this is something that can be really important, especially during the developing process and stop bath. So I will hold it up for you in just a moment. With this step, you only need it in here for like 30 seconds. Okay, and if you ever have trouble picking up your print, you can use some tongs to get them. Um, since we both know this glove is dirty, I'm gonna use tongs for the rest of the time when it comes to picking it up out of the bath so that um, I don't contaminate the water for everybody else. So here's what it looks like so far, okay? Watch what happens now when I put it in the fixer. The fixer is the tray that's closest to the water, which is the water wash down here. The fixer is going to, well, fix everything. It's going to make everything look really nice and it will actually fix the photo paper so that it's no longer this crazy pink color. This does need to stay in here a little longer than what I'm about to do, but just to show you what it looks like already, I'm gonna pull it out so you can see. This is what it looks like after being in the fixer, even for just like 20 seconds. That's a really awesome print. So I'm gonna put that in here for like another, let's say one, two minutes, okay? So that is how you make a positive print. Whenever you're done with this phase, just for this video, I'm being quick about it, it goes in the water wash or a water bath, but not the same one that you were using, one that's fairly clean so that it can fully rinse off the chemicals that might still be on there. We always put it in the rinse, the water wash for at least five minutes. Um, that way it's really nice before we run it through the print dryer, okay? Now, how to make a negative. Okay, so if it's the opposite of making a positive, instead of starting with the developer, we start with the fixer. So. I'm going to take my other leaf now because I don't want to use the one I used developer on, right? That would, would make sense. I'm going to dip my other leaf that I haven't used yet in the fixer. And I'm carefully, again, don't want to drip too much, taking my leaf and I'm going to lay it right over top, using my gloves to press down. And it doesn't take long, as you can see. Ooh, ooh la la. I'm going to turn it this way, do another one. Again, use gloves. I have one hand that's kind of just guiding, but it's not really touching the chemicals. Another really beautiful leaf print. Another one in the corner, trying to sort of create an interesting composition to look at instead of putting them all evenly spaced out where, you know, kind of ordinary. I'm spreading them around, kind of moving them differently. One is bigger than the others. And then I'm gonna take a little bit of this like piece of straw and just play around with moving this one around, sort of creating a sense of movement, overlapping. I just reapplied it into the fixer so that this one has more of an impact than the last one. And you can see there's definitely something interesting happening. I really gravitate towards things that are curvy, so that's what I'm doing. That feels good enough to me for this small piece of paper. You do have to be careful, okay? You'll see, like I caused a couple little fingerprints here. Be extra careful because that is like the way you ruin a print is by having a fingerprint there. So now I'm going to take it and I'm going to put it in the water wash just like before. Um, just to kind of get rid of some of the fixer before we put it in the developer. So again, you want about 30 seconds in the water, not water wash, the stop bath we're calling it for this sake. But I'm going to rush it along so that you don't have to sit and watch. And here it goes. In the developer. I'm gonna move this so you can see it start to transform. It really, oh boy, this is one of the coolest ones I've done yet because there's a really neat purple tone. I don't know if it's gonna stay, looks like it's going away a little bit, but there's a really awesome variety of like little tints and tones in it that make this chemigram really awesome. All right, let me pick it up and show you. This didn't take long. But wow, 
that, my friends, is a really interesting chemigram. Okay, so that, I might put in the Dove developer for like 10 more seconds, and then it's gonna go in the water wash for five minutes, and then I'm done, I have one of each. So there you have it, the process of chemigrams. It's really easy, really fun. You can even push it further by using other materials such as butter to resist some of the chemicals intentionally. Um, it's a, a way that is, again, very experimental, but um, produces really interesting marks that, you know, are completely extraordinary. I hope you have fun.